Hey guys, welcome to the video. Today we're going to teach you how to build your own home theater system in your house by yourself on a budget. Just stick around to the end and we will teach you all the tips and tricks. So one of the first things that you need to do in order to get started with this project is you need to know your layout and your space. So one of the things I recommend is that you take pictures and you take uh, measurements of your place, whether that's going to be your uh, basement, a garage, uh, another room in your house. Make sure you take exact measurements and just sketch it down on a, a piece of paper at the beginning. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, and then come back to your computer, uh, whether you have a Mac or a PC, open up some sort of uh, you know, drawing tool, whether that's Microsoft Paint on a PC or TextEd or any drawing tool that will allow you to kind of take those measurements and take your space and draw that out. So what I want you do, to do uh, firstly is draw basically a box, a square box, and then I want you to take your measurements and put all those on uh, from the paper onto the computer. This is gonna help you a visualize what's going on in you know in your space and B, it's gonna allow you to know what's going to fit where and what's not gonna fit. Because some of the crucial things that you need to definitely have room for is you need to have room for a um, projector, and that's whether it's gonna be ceiling mount or it's gonna be in back of you, or if it's gonna be a short throw that's gonna be right up against uh, the projection screen uh, in there. Also, you need to make sure that you have room for a equipment rack. Uh, generally, you wanna put an equipment rack in a closet somewhere so you don't see all the cables and all that equipment all over the place. So you wanna spend a good amount of time, um, again, sketching that out because uh, your area may not just be for home theater. Mine, when I did it, I ended up building a home theater, a gym, a play area, and just a, then a general use area because I have, um, I had a longer style house, um, not, not too wide, but it was all open, okay? So just keep that in your, your mind that um, you have to think of the other areas. You, you're not just going to turn your entire basement into a home theater um it's not going to be feasible and the space is going to be too big so the other thing to also think of is storage space you're going to want to keep some part of your basement unfinished so that way you can still have room for storage and to put odds and ends in uh, when you're there so make sure you factor in the storage piece as well so after you get things laid out don't be afraid then to go to your space, print out what you did on the computer and take some painter's tape and put that down on the floor and mark things out. And even though you don't have the furniture yet, take some chairs or take something and put it in the space. Um, so that way you can kind of, again, visualize in your mind and you can step away and you can see um, what it's gonna look like. Because again, you really get one chance to do this. You don't want to go through all this work and then say, ah, oh, I wish I did this, okay? So I can't emphasize enough that you have to put the planning in um, to make this project success successful. Um, once you've done that, again, everyone's going to be in a different phase. My basement was not um, finished at all. There was no studs. There was no ceiling. There was nothing. Some of you may already have walls and a ceiling up. So you're gonna jump in at various stages uh, from this video as we go along. Um, if you're starting from scratch like I did, again, you gotta plan out the walls. Um, you're gonna have to plan out uh, the routing of your wiring, uh, lighting, uh, acoustical uh, pieces for the sound. And again, don't let this all overwhelm you. I'm gonna go into the very, uh, uh, very good detail on all these areas and what you need to do. So after you have things kind of visually laid out and, uh, you know, it's 
kind of where, where you want to be, that's when you're going to go into the next step of either starting to build. Like me, I started putting up my walls. Um, or if you already have walls, then you're going to start starting to go into looking at paint colors. Um, your ceiling, your ceiling needs to be black. So if you have a drop ceiling, you're going to want to do black ceiling tiles. You need to make the space as dark as possible. You don't want any natural light coming in. Um, if you do have windows or some other source of light um, that's coming in, you need to be uh, able to have a way to control that, whether it be blinds or something. Um, in my space, I only had one window to contend with, so all I had to do was basically put a shade over it, and I was done with that, okay? So again, this, there's lots of things to think about. Um, you don't just put a projector up in a screen and some speakers and you have a home theater. Um, so again, ceiling needs to be black, okay? You want to stick with dark colors for your walls, okay? So again, pick something. It doesn't, again, it doesn't need to be black. I'm going to recommend that the wall that your screen is going on paint that black, okay? Because again, you want um, the illusion that there's nothing on that wall besides the screen, okay? Uh, you don't want light reflecting off of that wall. It's the same with the um, your other walls, okay? You don't want light reflecting off of that from your projector or any other source. So when you're finding a paint and you choose your color, make sure you get just a matte finish. Don't get anything that has gloss or anything else in it. You don't want it shiny. You just want it flat. And it doesn't have to be boring. Uh, there's lots of dark colors that contrast each other. Um, and when we get further into this video, I'll show you my home theater and the colors that I chose. So after you've done all the prepping uh, for things like that, then it's time for uh, considering lighting, okay? Again, if you're starting from the beginning like I did, I put uh, drop, uh, I put uh, LED drop lighting up into my ceiling. But again, I staggered it in a way that it wouldn't be too much where I could dim it down while watching a movie and it wouldn't um, interfere with uh, the projection system, okay? So again, if you already have lighting, um, that's fine. Just make sure it's something that you can tr control with a dimmer. Um, it's dimmable and you want a warm light. You don't want bright fluorescent lights because that's not gonna work either. Um, I recommend if, if you can, that you get a um, recessed can or they're not even cans anymore with the technology with LEDs, but um, put those in the ceiling and it's gonna make things a lot easier as far as lighting. So then you need to start shopping around for your components, okay? And this is a, the big misconception with a lot of people. You don't have to go out and spend thousands and thousands of dollars uh, on equipment to have a quality home theater system, okay? So what I did is I did a lot of research um, on projectors, on sound systems, um, on how I was going to control the lighting, uh, all these various things. So I went on Amazon and I bought a 120-inch uh, projection screen. It was pretty easy to put together. Again, I will show you this later in the video. Uh, pretty much uh, is just a piece of material and you build the frame and you snap the um, the screen on there. Now, if you don't want to go that route and actually buy a screen, you can just paint the wall, um, make a square uh, with, the, with the black paint, obviously, and then white, and you can do that as well. The other thing is, is TVs are coming so far in, in advancement these days, and you might be actually better off buying a 85-inch TV that you can put on the wall, and that's going to save you on have to spending money on a projector, okay? Uh, because projectors tend to not be the cheapest thing um, because you do want a quality projector. Um, and that's another key is you want a quality projector. So you get a good image. Uh, 
you, you don't want something that's uh, going to be grainy and it's not going to look good. Again, the, the two key components out of this whole thing is having a good quality picture and some decent sound. Okay. So on sound, um, I chose a clip uh, system. Um, a lot of you uh, may think Bose is probably the best or out there, and that's probably what you think is in professional movie theaters when you go to a cinema, but that's not the case. Uh, Bose is more of a consumer product, and then uh, there are other products getting to, um, you know, when you go to concerts and things like that, concert halls. Um, when you're doing a home theater in your house, I would... Uh, I would highly stick away from Bose just because of their limitations on the back end. Another thing uh, that you have to consider, do you want a 5.1 channel system? So for you, those of you that don't know what that means, a 5.1 is five surround speakers. So two fronts, two rears, one center, and then the one is your sub um, for your base. So again, if you're just looking for kind of like a just jump start, you can just start with a 5.1. There's nothing wrong with that because you can add on, okay, and then turn it into a 7.1, which uh, from my explanation before, then you would have seven speakers total and one sub. So I ended up doing uh, a 7.1 system, and I also put in some overhead speakers uh, to simulate Dolby Atmos. And if you don't know what that is, Dolby Atmos is a new technology where they have sound that immerses above you. So picture watching a movie that ha it's raining out. Um, it will give you the effect that the rain is literally falling on top of you and you can hear that because the speakers are above you and the sound is coming down. So again, this is just something that I wanted to play around with. I didn't actually buy uh, necessarily uh, Dolby Atmos speakers uh, because of, again, my budget. So touching on wiring, um, again, if you're starting from scratch, you want to make sure that you're running all your necessary wiring to your speakers, your lighting, your electrical, all that sort of stuff. So make sure all that's roughed in before you go ahead and uh, close up the walls because the last thing you want is to close up the walls and forget that you... Um, forget to run a wire and that's just going to take much longer so when you're going to pick out speaker wire you don't need anything crazy what i would recommend is going to your local electrical supply warehouse uh, generally you'll have these in your area where um, a lot of your electrical contractors and such go you can just walk in uh, as a consumer and just tell them that you want some good quality speaker cable um, Generally, it's going to be 14 gauge wire. Uh, so 14 gauge meaning that's the thickness of the wire. You don't want anything too thin because again, you're pushing a lot of, putting a lot of voltage through that uh, because in order to get that immersive sound and that powerful sound from your uh, amplifier, you need to have good quality speakers. So all these things that I'm touching upon are the key components to having a successful home theater system uh, from the get-go and not have to um, switch things around because you don't like it. Now, on that, home theaters are something where you're going to always want more, okay? You're going to always want to have it louder or more bass. So down the road, you may end up adding another sub to add even more deeper bass. Um, you may switch out your entire amplifier system because you want more power. You don't want to go too crazy at the beginning and you don't want to go too small. So again, the products that I'm going to show you, and again, I'll put them in the description below. These are all um, products that I chose based off of all of my research. Um, Lastly, uh, acoustical treatments is another big thing because when you start building a home theater, you have sound and it's going to start bouncing all off of your walls, your ceiling, things like that. 
So again, if you have a basement, you want to make sure that if before you um, put your ceiling up that you insulate your ceilings really well because you don't want that sound bouncing off the ceiling and then causing echoes uh, or you know anything like that where it's going to affect the sound. So make sure, um, and this is why I recommend a drop ceiling because you can re easily remove a tile and get above that space if you have to do anything else versus doing uh, drywall and then you're kind of stuck. You can't get above there. So I do highly recommend doing a drop ceiling. So um, insulate your ceilings, your walls, and then when everything's closed up, that's when you have to start maybe possibly doing some acoustical treatments. Now, what I did was I went on the internet, found some um, DIY home theater forums where I was able to ask some questions on if there was any sound engineers or someone that could help me uh, figure out what I needed for my space. So I was able to find someone online that was able to take pictures of my space. They didn't have to come here. And they were able to tell me, okay, I needed three acoustical panels on one of my walls and to put an area rug in uh, to absorb any of that sound that could escape. Because again, preparation is key for any home theater. Uh, going to furniture, furniture, you can spend thousands of dollars on a just one chair, okay? I was not doing that. I wasn't going to spend that much money on something you just sit in, okay? So again, what I did is I went on Amazon, found a quality recliner, and I bought four of them because that's uh, the space that I had, and they've worked great ever since. Um, I haven't done it yet, but a lot of them, a lot of the fancy ones come with like LED lighting in them. Um, but again, that's something simple that you can go on Amazon, buy some LED strips and put them underneath the chairs and they'll look just as good as the uh, high-end fancy furniture. So I know I'm getting into um, a lot of different areas with this and all this will make sense once I take you step by step through my visually through my current setup what i wanted to do was to kind of um, talk to you first and just give you some of the pointers and ideas to start thinking about um, on building a home theater so some of the benefits of having a home theater system in your house is it adds value to your house and it also uh, brings your family together okay um, the nice thing about having a home theater is you don't have to necessarily go out to um, movie theaters to watch a movie. Or if there's a big game on the uh, on that night, you don't have to you know crowd around your TV in your living room with all your friends when you can bring them right down to your home theater. Uh, because some of the other things that you can add on, and I will show you, is I put a little bit of a bar area where it's got drinks. It has popcorn machine. Uh, the kids picked out a slushy machine and a cotton candy machine. So you can kind of make it your uh, your own thing. It, it's a sense of bringing the family together because you can have a movie night. Uh, so those are the, some of the um, factors of uh, and benefits of having a home theater right in your house. One of the other key components is setting a realistic budget, okay? Um, because equipment can get very expensive very quick and as well as uh, building materials if you have to build out the area. So stick with a budget um, or at least set a budget of what you're willing to spend. Um, I would say minimum $5,000 um, between equipment and some uh, materials to acoustical materials to put in that space. But set a, you, you want to set a budget because, again, a home theater system in your house is something that you can grow upon. It's not something that you build and it's done, okay? So just put some realistic numbers in your head uh, before you move forward on that. The thing um, to think of is your seating, okay? So if you have a um, dedicated room and you're trying to, and it's not very big, that's when you start getting into doing risers where you can put multiple heights of um, seating in. 
Um, and, you know, that's the same reason they do that in the professional theaters that you go to because they can fit more people in without obstructions, okay? Um, my movie theater, I only needed four seats. Um, and then I have floor space in front if we had uh, friends or family over or we could add a chair in there. But if you have a dedicated room that's, say, not in your basement or it's closed in and it's a little bit narrower, uh, then you can start getting into doing tiered seating. So that way, again, there's no obstructions to the screen. Now, just bear in mind, when you start getting into doing things like that, it's going to cost more money and labor um, building those risers. Um, I didn't do that um, because, again, I didn't need to, but uh, even if I did do that, I would have had to close the space in, and I didn't want that. I wanted some openness uh, to the space. Another thing that you're going to have to think of is automation uh, for your space, because you're not going to want to have to be getting up and down to, say, turn the projector on or uh, turn the volume up or change sources on your um your system to go from say a Blu-ray player or to an Apple TV. Okay. So these aren't, um, these aren't very, uh, tricky systems that you have to, um, go out and buy or things that are very hard to configure, but these are things that you're going to want to think of. So again, lighting control, uh, being able to have a universal remote that basically can, uh, with a click of a button can do everything. And again, that's what I did. So um, I have a universal remote. If I hit watch a movie, my lights come down, it goes to the correct source, and your movie starts playing. So again, we'll get a little bit more in detail on those sort of components and what you should be looking for. The moment you guys have been waiting for, now we are down into my home theater. Uh, I'm going to show you around. And uh, I know I did a lot of talking in the beginning of the video, but um, again, like I said, there's a lot of planning that goes into uh, building this sort of space. So as you can see, this is my home theater. Um, I have a, like I said, a 120 inch screen that is right here. Um, I actually have a, sh what's called a short throw projector. So that projector is only about a foot off the wall. And that is what's uh, projecting that image onto the screen. Now, the difference between the short throw and the uh, just a regular long throw projector is uh, if I had a long throw, it would be somewhere mounted up in here or possibly even further back. Um, I decided to do this because, again, it's space saving and uh, I like the short throws. Uh, they put out a really good picture and for the price, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's worth it. This is an Epson Brightlink. Uh, actually, these are used often in schools um, because, again, of the same situation. So that's the screen. Again, um, you build the frame right here, and then this white matte finish on the back just gets snapped in. Uh, if you're noticing the LEDs around the outside, I added those. So whatever color is uh, going on the screen it tries to match it um, it's just a little box third party box that i found on amazon that you can get it just adds another element uh, when you're watching a movie uh, in the dark so over here as you can see i have a 5.1 system so i got my left channel speaker there my right channel speaker there my center channel my sub okay my two rear channels are one's right there and one is right there. Now, some of you that are audio experts may be saying, Derek, those are too high. And I 100% agree with you. But because of the way I had to build this out, um, I, had to, I, I had to put it at that height because especially on this wall, I, it, didn't, it didn't move out far enough so um, I couldn't put it at ear level because you you want your rear speakers at your ear level so it's it's uh, uh, when you're sitting down the it's going right at you 
But what I was able to do with these was I was able to adjust um, during some of the calibration, I was able to adjust the direction that it, um, you know, that the sound comes out at. So, uh, you know, I don't miss out much on it and it doesn't really hurt the picture. Now, before I was talking about Dolby Atmos, so if you see my speakers in the ceiling, I have one over here and one over here. So again, I, I am pumping sound through, theirs, through those um, as an auxiliary rear to give me a little bit of that effect of uh, the Dolby Atmos. Again, there's my black ceiling, okay? These are ceiling tiles, okay? Very easy to access. These are my round LED lights that I put in. Again, warm color temperature. Now going over to here, you're probably saying, what are those? These are sound panels, okay? All they are is they're a special fabric, okay? And what they do is they absorb sound, okay? Because what you want is as your audio is coming out of your speakers, audio bounces um, audio bounces off the ceiling, off the floor, um, all over the place, and you don't want that. So what these do is these absorb the sound and keep that sound in this area and controls it. Um, so like I said, I had talked to a third party uh, guy on a forum on the internet, and after uh, the space uh, was designed, this is what was recommended uh, for sound absorption. Um, again, uh, you got to remember above the ceiling, I have uh, insulation and all my walls are packed full of insulation. So as you can see, uh, this is the um, theater. And like I told you, when designing your space, I didn't want it uh, just the theater. Uh, this kind of desig designates the theater area, the four seats here. So if I come around the other side, you can clearly define that this is the theater section. And that's why I broke it up from the black to the white tiles. And I got my sort of general gaming area over here. Um, you know, we can change this out, but this is, you know, right now this is just a pool table. And then the other thing is, as I told you, I built like a little bar um, got the snow cone machine, popcorn, and we bring drinks down. Um, and my wife uh, built some storage units uh, and such over there. So again, I created this space so it was multi-use. It's not just a home theater. And as you can tell, I wouldn't have been able to make this whole area home theater because it's just the way that I have these pillars in the way and the staircase coming down, I wouldn't have been able to make the whole room um, a home theater. And then on each end, through those doors, there and there, I have storage. So there's a little bit of storage on each end. From before, this is my equipment closet. All of, uh, so this is underneath the staircase. Most people usually don't take advantage of this space, but um, this is the perfect spot to put all of your components in here, okay? And as we look in here, um, I have a Denon uh, receiver in here, which is really good. They uh, make a great receiver. And one of the nice things, too, that it comes with is it comes with this, what's called an Odyssey microphone. So when you have all your speakers set up and placed, you put this special microphone out in the middle and it runs a bunch of tests, test sounds, and it actually auto calibrates your speakers for you. Um, what I did is I actually did make some of my own tweaks because of my, I do have some background in audio engineering, um, but it does help, again, beginners. Uh, you put that out, you let it go through its test, and it sets it. Um, of course, we have a bunch of Blu-rays. Uh, I got the Universe remote. So this is the Harmony remote. Um, unfortunately, they don't make this remote anymore, and I really wish they uh, did because it was uh, it's a great remote. You program all of this through a web uh, through an app on your phone, or you can log into the web interface, 
And if you look closely enough, um, I have custom things like watch, uh, watch Apple TV. Actually, it's going through a sync right now. Uh, watch Apple TV. Um, play Xbox. That's for the uh, my son. And and you can also control the lights. So again, so getting into lighting control, I uh, put all Leviton switches in. So if you notice on the wall right here, okay, these are all Leviton switches. Did you can physically touch them and you know, as you can see, the lights are dimming, okay? But these also control, go back to a controller that then I'm able to integrate in. And with that controller, I'm able to talk to the, the, wall, the wall switches and have it send commands. So, for instance, when you hit watch movie on the controller, I tell it to dim the lights. So everything's the one push of a button, everything happens. My movie comes on, the lights go down, the sound turns up. Okay, so that's what I talked about earlier about um, you want some sort of automation. You don't have to go crazy uh, so you're not getting up and down or have 10 different remotes to, to control your environment here. So the other thing I wanted to show you were these are the chairs that I got off of Amazon. Uh, they're... You know, they're not real leather, but they feel like leather. Uh, they're a nice, comfortable chair. They're a recliner. And these were a little over $100 a piece. They came fully assembled from Amazon. Um, had these, I've had these for three years now and have not had one problem with it. And that's with, you know, kids sitting in them and, um, you know, putting up and down, up and down, and have not had any problems with them. So, again, no need to go out there and buy, you know, a $2,000 chair to sit in. So again, uh, I know I did a lot of talking in the beginning and went over a lot of uh, details uh, about building a home theater. But again, uh, to, to build something successful that's going to work, you have to put the planning into it. Um, after that, executing it and buying the equipment, um, that's honestly the, the easy part. Um, so again, if you have any questions or you're thinking about starting one and you're not sure or you get stuck, uh, leave me a comment below. I'd be happy to respond back to you um, and give you some advice if you need that. Um, and also down in the description, I will put links to all the equipment that I have um, that I purchased so you can kind of go back and see what I did because um, by no means is this a uh, $50,000 home theater, but uh, at the end of the day, it looks great, I think, and it sounds really good, and uh, it's, it's just a great place to hang out. So I really appreciate you sticking into the end and watching the video. Uh, I hope you hit that subscribe button for more channel content. And I will see you on the next one.